steps for the last couple of videos, I've obviously been just drilling into mindset because you can't actually do something unless you have the right mindset. You can't actually continue doing something unless you have the right mindset. You can't actually, when things get hard, when it, when, when people say no and you start doubting yourself, you gotta have the right mindset. And that's essentially what sales is. Nobody wants to say they're in sales. Nobody wants to say that they influence or manage or first of all, you're always selling yourself and you're always selling yourself to other people. You're selling your ideas, whether you're a manager, you're an owner, whether you're actually physically buying, or I'm sorry, you're physically selling a service or product, you're always in sales. So these are questions that customers, clients, whatever they are, referrals, business, whatever, it could be even a website. The first question that they're always asking, and they're always asking this continuously throughout the presentation, throughout the sales funnel, throughout the website, if they wanna do business with you, they're continuously asking these three questions. The first one is, do you know what I want? So this is a multitude of, uh, not even answers, it's a multitude of questions that you have to go through, okay? Let's just actually just go over the entire sales funnel from a complete newbie to an expert. The, the series, I should say, that someone goes through is that they tell the customer, this is what you want. This is what you need. They don't ask any questions. They just push their shit onto someone else and they expect them to buy. That's a complete newbie. Once they start getting a little dialed in and they start reading up on a little bit of sales, then they start saying, okay, I gotta ask some questions. Okay, so you start asking questions. Okay, okay, but you're still pushing the same style, the same mundane, the same just, just blanket box service at them, even though their needs and wants may not fit into that box. Then you move on to the next level, which is you find out what they want, you find out their needs, you find out their desires, you find out their hurts, their pains, and then you sell them how your service can actually help them out. That's essentially fact finding. That's essentially sales finding. That's essentially putting them through their sales funnel. They're a qualified lead. Okay, they're a lead, qualified lead, then you meet them, then, you, then you're on an appointment for a second time, then you pitch them, and then they say yes. There's only a multitude of people that will actually buy your service, but you have to reach out to this amount of people, and the only way to get to here is that is you ask the questions, and they believe you know what they want. This is a jacket that I bought recently. Okay, I walked into a store, I said I want a tan jacket that's, that's lightweight for the summer, and it's very stylish. Someone else could have walked into the store and said, I'm going to prom, or I want to upgrade my attire, or I need this jacket immediately, I'm about to go to a wedding. All of our needs are different. I need to be convinced that this guy, in other words, if this guy walked around the whole store and he was showing me blue blazers or he was showing me wool jackets, which are very hot in the summer, I'd be like, this guy doesn't know what I want. This guy has no idea what I want. I told him what I want and he still doesn't. Your client, has to believe you know what they want. And the only way to do that is obviously through questions, fact finding, and getting to their hurt and their pain and everything else. And the only way to find out why I'm gonna buy something is if I tell them tan, stylish, lightweight material. Boom, you got a customer, I'm buying it. First one is obviously, do you know what I want? The second one is, can you provide that? This is obviously, say he, this salesperson showed me around all the all the blazers in the, in the store. And I look around, I'm like, well, all right, you can't provide what I want. See, there's two ways that this could be handled in real life. We can look online and we can order it on online and we can ship it to you. We don't have it in store, but we could ship it to you. Or he could say, we don't have it. So they know what I want, but they can't provide it. So in other words, you have to dial in. How does this actually come down to my industry? So I call a for sale by owner. For sale by owner is someone that's listing their home on their own in real estate and they're looking to find a buyer. So I call them and I ask them all the questions. Why are you selling? When are you looking to move? When are you looking to close? What price do you want? Why is it still on the market? Have you received any offers? You ask all the questions, you dial it in, and then you have a good understanding about can your needs and wants fit their service? If someone says, I'm listed at a million dollars, I can't go any lower and I'm not paying a broker because anything below that, I'm gonna be underwater and I have a mortgage to pay. That's not an ideal customer. A lot of people will continuously go, and I will until I actually believe what they're telling me is factual. So in other words, I know they know I know what they want. I don't think I could provide them that service because I look at it and I say, I know you're at a million dollars, but we should be really listed at 900,000. So in other words, they're underwater, they are trying to sell in a down market, and we can't get them that price. So in other words, I can't provide them that. However, once you actually dial in and you understand, okay, you're at a million dollars, you have room to go down, 
you are willing to accept the 6% commission, then my service can actually help you. Let's sit down for 10 minutes and review that. And then you go over the comparables, so then you obviously show the price, then you go over what you could do and the value add, which shows that the 6% is worth it, and then you list it. Okay, it's not as easy as that, but I'm just breaking it down into steps. So the first one is, are they convinced I know what they want? Are they convinced I can provide them that product or service? This could be on a website. You know, someone goes on your website and they say, I think they actually do what I want, whether it's a service or a product, but I don't think they could provide it. Okay. This is what I want, but the price isn't there. The third thing is, are you, well, obviously, are you good enough, but do they like you? Do you like, you? so in other words, I go, they may understand that I want or understand I know what they want. I can provide the service, but they don't like me. Okay, this is sales 101 is that they will not buy. Sometimes they will. There's a lot of people that they will. You know, I would say about five years ago before the internet has really taken off in real estate and maybe other areas where there's incredible competition. You know, if you're looking for a swim cap or goggles, you knew you were going to Speedo or TYR. You know, I just got into triathlon, so I'm just, you know, I don't know the name of it, but you had a company you were gonna go to. If you're looking at a car dealership, you knew you were probably gonna go to the same one that you maybe had, and that's why a lot of them, they like leasing, because then you have kind of like a relationship going. They say every three years, we'll give you a new car, give us the old one. But nowadays, there's so much competition online. You know, I just bought a hat and goggles, and a swim cap, I should say, and goggles, I don't even know who the company is. I don't know where they're based out of, but I just know the reviews are really good. In other words, they have testimonials from other people that like their stuff. Me, my testimonials online, my reviews online on Google and Facebook, and who I am in person, because there's a lot of people that I just, you know, for whatever reason, they don't like me. I have to know what they want, be able to show that I can give them what they want and be likable. Back in the day, I didn't need to be likable. There was tons of companies out there that people are like, oh, this is the only company around, you know, like Google. Google has the complete, just Amazon, another one. You may not like Amazon, but Amazon's the, the monopoly up there. Google is the monopoly. Apple is losing their stuff. In other words, they're losing their competition edge, their competitive edge, because people are saying, you can provide me what I want, you know what I want, except, I don't know, it's not really likable because you're not really upgrading what I want, okay? you're Yeah, you're improving the camera and maybe the screen a little bit, but it's not really monumental year over year difference between the iPhones. Improving, I would say it's in order on how you want to actually go down the sales funnel. In other words, learning how to close better. So the first one is understanding what someone wants because you can't actually, you can, you can understand what they want and you could be likable, but you don't know how to pitch your service to their needs. So the first thing is getting really, really good at understanding people's needs. Then you get really, really good at putting what you can do on top of those needs. We could fill all those needs. We could fill all that, that, that hurt that you have, which is, I need a cloud service provider. I need a real estate agent. I need someone to find me a home. I need someone to construct my home. I need someone to fix my, my leak or my plumbing, my issues, whatever the case is, psychological. It could be a gym membership. You have to be able to show, you understand their needs, be able to show that you understand and can fill those needs, but you also have to be likable because there's way too too much competition. I think the best book for that, there's, there's a couple of really good books. Number one is Fanatical Prospecting, How to Win Friends and Influence People. You could go into the something book of confidence. I forgot that. The Six Pillars of Confidence is, or Self-Esteem is really good. There's a ton of books out there on sales. Grant Cardone has a really good on 10X rule. Sales is only through practice. It is not It is not something you just sit back and you're a keyboard warrior. You actually have to be on the phone. You actually have to be in front of a customer. You actually have to be in front of a prospect. You actually have to be able to field an objection. And the only way to get out into the field and be confident in handling an objection is when you do it. You, you can't just go out there and just expect your pitch, your presentation to go well if it's the first one. You have to go over these three steps combine them together, and then you are a master salesperson. If you want to learn more, we have a, a tutorial out there. It's bpi.live slash you. It's free right now because I just am adding videos to the library, but essentially that's going to be my legacy. This isn't like a pitch or anything, even though it is a, you know, a pitch. But essentially, I want to when I bring on agents, I want to send them there for free. You know, in the future, maybe I'll charge, I have no idea. But I want to send them there for free. So if you guys want to go there, sign up for free. It, it's just a, a ton of videos that I go into pitching, presentations, 
sessions, I go into calls, everything. And I'm still learning, okay? You gotta get 1% better. So if you guys have any questions, leave in the comments below. Hopefully this video helped in some way, shape, or form. If you guys want any topics, obviously also leave those comments below. Have an amazing day. Talk to you guys soon.